the point I did not know. It just there were different things that just happened to me, and I followed whatever happened. And uh, it wasn't like one of those really planned things where you feel that oh, right from my childhood I wanted to become an actor or an artist or anything like that. I like many other middle class Indian girls and boys was completely clueless what I want to do. And the usual thing was to do science or engineering. If you are not a very bad academic student, you know, I had my ECM in 90s, so I, get, I got into a good college. So it was just one of those things that everyone is doing, so you do it. Till I attended this workshop in National School of Drama, and I did a play with a German director. Uh, it just changed my life. And I just felt, uh, and I went for a trekking to Gangotri and Gomuk. All those three things happened back to back. And something changed inside me and I felt, I want to do something else. And I want to perform. And, and I was very young in my teens still at that time. And my only reason to change was because everybody said that, oh, you're, you can act, you're a good actress. And I used to sing and, and, and people were really impressed by my singing and so all that put together, you know, it was it was simply that at that point of time. But when I got admission in NSD, which I never thought I would, because it's, it's very tough, they, they take only 20 students in a huge country like this. And then those three years changed so much, I discovered myself uh, from a very protected you know, upper middle class upbringing. I was exposed to so many things which were sometimes disturbing, sometimes exploratory. Like, so it was, I, I, I discovered myself. And then after that, again, I did not know whether I want to work in film. But it happened so that right after NSD, I kept getting work in film. And I constantly balanced theater and film. And then, the entire journey of working with various people across the globe and living in various different parts of the world and working in the theatre, music, film. That whole journey has been very, very enriching and I've slowly started uh, to realise that any artist's journey and, and an actor's journey is actually a journey of self-discovery through every character that you play, through every story that you're a part of. Because it's always a part of me that actually connects and discovers something about it. I think <laughs> art house cinema is struggling everywhere in the world. I mean, art as such is, um, unless there is a capital attached to it. So we do live in a era where uh, everything is counted by money, and I think there's a lot of backlash also to, to that ideology. But it's not only art, anything to do with social sciences, humanities. You go to universities, the kind of funding that um, engineering or bio, bio sciences get. Anything, that, anything that's creative but doesn't generate an immediate capital and money does not get that kind of you know, funding. So it's, it's very difficult everywhere in the world. Having said that, there are pockets of the new things that are happening with technology again because you have platforms um, like the internet and web series and Amazon and Netflix now coming out and uh, digital cameras, mobile phones that you can express anything through that. So I think on the one hand it's making us uh, uh, you know somehow lose our we think you know lose our artistic sensibilities but then there are artists who are discovering to express themselves in different ways with the same technology. So the form of art is I think changing and it's a, it's a it's an interesting phase so it's a it's a phase of change so there would be some people who are puritans who will say that it's everything now is not good you know, it no, it's not like how it used to be of course it's not how it's you know it used to be but um, I think I, I, I think we will still find a different voice and we will still express the things that concern us in our society and uh, there will be always ups and downs and it has always been like that. I think gender equality as such uh, <clears throat> is a very twisted thing in India as compared to abroad. On the one hand we have 
many women who are in very powerful positions. We've always had very strong women politicians, um, dancers, corporate heads, you know, women who run NGOs, like women, you know, entrepreneurs. Um, and a lot of role models for women through history, freedom fighters. But when you come to the general population, they are actually more empowered than it is here. Mm -hmm. And my understanding of that, I don't know whether this is a standard understanding, is that uh, women who come from elite families in our country have actually equal opportunity. And we somehow are privileged in that way that we come from middle class or upper middle class upbringing where our parents were very liberal so we went to you know they, we were never there was no distinction but a vast majority is not like that and why we see those exceptional achievers is because they all come from very very influential families without that help of the patriarchy it's very tough in India and the thing in the west is that that is not true really true. So a filmmaker like Andre Arnold, who actually comes from a very humble background and is able to become a filmmaker because filmmaking and an artistic filmmaker, not a commercial filmmaker, that would be very difficult in India, I think, for a woman. I think, uh, <laughs> I think, yeah, to be very honest, I don't know whether my male friends would like it. But yes, working with women, um, the justice that I do to the woman characters there is much more layered. It's not unidimensional because the understanding of many things is uh, we are on a common ground. Whereas the male perspective is a male perspective. Um, having said that, I have seen many films and writ like read many many pieces of literature written by men um, which amazes me in their understanding of women um, but in my um, uh, experience of working most of the times I've really enjoyed working with male directors when they give me the freedom to create my own like this one film called Angry Indian Goddesses which is about women directed by a man but you know what he did was, he gave us, he didn't tell us anything, he didn't even give us characters, except for my character. He was discovering everything through improvisation. So he used to put people into situations and let them discover. And he says that, that I don't know how they talk, what they do, so I had to depend on them. So then that process becomes really, really interesting and it's almost like a dialogue and an exchange. Unfortunately, in our country, uh, uh, many, many people who come to mainstream cinema don't have the exposure and the education to understand these differences. So, they hear feminism as some word from somewhere through tabloid newspapers and so the understanding, an academic understanding or artistic understanding or, or an understanding from a social point of view is just not there. So I would say it is their ignorance that they make those statements because they don't know what they're talking about. And I, I mean, it's dangerous because you know lots of young people are following them. Um, I, I just think that uh, people in responsible positions who, due to whatever reason, if they become very famous, even if they don't have that understanding, then please better go back and read and do some research and work. So obviously, there is no question that. We have to keep asserting, you know, feminist values because these things are very, very, very subtle and it's also very easy for certain kind of men also to see, say that sometimes, you know, oh God, these feminists and, you know, so kuch to hai unke paas, but pata nahi kya problem hai. I'm like, dude, <laughs> give us a break. Do you have to think twice if you're walking down the street all alone at one o'clock in the night? Just that simple question. However empowered I am, however influential I am, I still have to think twice. So there I can just say shut up. So till I get that equality, till I can live that fearless existence, I think no one has a right to tell us that listen you have everything. We don't. 
I think that sort of a pressure is there on both men and women, um, and it's it's a it's a sense of a very aspirational colonial hangover to a certain extent because uh, you know the British went and after that we are colonially colonially hungover by America now so like we like everything that is Hollywood we like you know the junk food and the way we dress up the Nikes our coffees and everything is like sort of aspirational America. So it's a deep rooted thing and again uh, I don't know how to counter it but as as actors I personally always make it a point that uh, I don't wear makeup which is lighter than my skin tone. I don't change the texture of my hair unless it is required for a character. I remain very normal and casual in my real life. Of course when I play different characters I can look anything. If that requires me to wear blue contacts and blonde hair I'll do it. But as Tanishka Chatterjee, I try to remain as normal and natural as possible so that, you know, whatever little following I have, one can say that you can, you can become an actor, which is so much to do with the way you look. So if, if you can do that as a woman, then a normal woman should not be pressurized with these things at all. It depends on what are you aspiring. Are you aspiring to um, become an actor because you become famous and you have nice makeup vans and you know red carpets and lovely gowns and you know whether those are the aspirations or you're in love with the craft. So I think uh, whether it's an actor or an actress, I, I would suggest the same thing that it is tough and that is the reality. I ideate with my friends who are directors and I have been doing like Parched was a film that kind of happened like that. It was a story that I had encountered in Gujarat and I narrated it to uh, my very dear friend Lina and other just over a dinner and she's like that's my next film <laughs> and then she went there and of course just the thread of my character remains similar to what I had narrated to her but Everything else, of course, she wrote the, the entire screenplay, brought in many more things and all the other characters. But just that seed of the idea came from there. So we developed it and I'm very uh, thankful to her that she allowed me to develop my character and put in things and improvise while in the process of writing. Because on set in a film, it's very difficult. You know, the director needs to have an idea of what, where it is going. And I'm collaborating with another filmmaker, Anir, uh, with another story that I have written and uh, he really likes it and um, so we decided, okay, now we, we'll write and we'll, we'll make that. But right now I'm just doing that and I want to act because I, I still am discovering myself as an actor. Um, I'll be very uh, truthful and honest here that I think women, uh, most women that I know, and I talk that from my personal experience as well, are not very strictly heterosexual. So there's a part of us which always connects to certain feelings about our attraction towards the same sex. So as an actor, when I played a character who's gay, I had to understand that side of me. So I would not say that I am from another position who is trying to understand that because there is a part of me which connects to it very strongly as well. Yes, so 24th of June is my next release uh, which is uh, again a film about our school system, our education but primarily about a physics teacher who tries to teach physics in a very different way so that the students identify with the application and not get bored in the class and the backbenchers, so-called backbenchers also get interested in the subject. And so again it's a very interesting story about this film and initially the director spoke to me. He said, Tanishta, I have a role for you in the film uh, yeah, but I want like, he, he was thinking that the physics teacher would be, the main protagonist would be a man. And then when he said that I want you to play the principal and I was like why is it that physics has to be always taught by a man? <laughs> so 
he looked at me and then I went to New York for another film's release and he emailed me and he said I've changed it to a woman and you're playing it now. Oh, then there's another Australian romantic comedy that I did with Brett Lee and again the woman's character is someone who's a single mother who's very fiercely independent, she's educated, she lives alone, she has a very high-flying marketing job and you know and then she she's being set up by her family with all these doctors and engineers and she's like no I want to fall in love with the person. Initially I didn't have a choice. <laughs> then slowly I started having choices but uh, I was quite lucky that very soon in my career I started getting films like The Indian Circus, Brick Lane which are all very strong female protagonists. Getting roles where I was playing the wife or the girlfriend of the male protagonist and that was a little boring sometimes. Uh, sometimes it was interesting because the character in itself had something as well. I have actually been lucky that I have played various different parts from a widow to a physics teacher to a Bangladeshi girl to a uh, you know a, a sex worker to um, a, an activist who's fighting for environment and gay rights and uh, you know to the first woman doctor of India to like all these so I'm, I'm spoiled. <laughs>